Scorbit Vision is a series of web tools designed to let you visualize any type of live scores or leaderboards for your pinball machines. It's broken down into a number of different categories. Scoreboards, which are live views of pinball machines. Leaderboards, which are collections of high scores. Combo boards allow you to combine both scoreboards and leaderboards on a single screen. And slideshows, which allow you to view any number of these screens, scoreboards, leaderboards, or combo boards with delays on a slideshow presentation. Finally, there's stream boards, which are designed to allow people who stream pinball to integrate scores into their various types of live streams using software like OBS. So we're going to go over all of this, but to start, we're on the home page where you can see the newest public scoreboards as well as the newest public leaderboards. These are different scoreboards and leaderboards that are created by users that are set to public, which means anybody can see them. And as long as you have a browser, you can access it with a URL. We'll explain in a moment. So let's start with scoreboards. Scoreboards are designed to show you a live representation of a pinball machine. So to give you an example of what one looks like, we'll go ahead and open uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory that we have here in the Scorbit Lab. As you can see here, any user that is currently playing on the game can be visualized on the scoreboard. And that's any number of players. Uh, if they've uh, used the Scorbit app and claimed a player slot, you will see their name right there. It demonstrates the modes that are currently active during the game, the ball state, and so forth. Um, but we'll get to more how this gets created now. So let's go ahead and create a scoreboard. We'll click Add Scoreboard at the bottom of the screen. For starters, you should give your scoreboard a unique title so it's easy to distinguish from other scoreboards. For the purposes of this, we'll call it Jay's Willy Wonka Game. Next, you get to choose whether or not it's a private or a public leaderboard. Private leaderboards are designed that only uh, you with your own login and password can see. Public leaderboards are for anyone to see. We like public leaderboards. And then you have to select a specific machine. And you can do that by typing the name of it, or it will present machines that are currently owned by you uh, beneath the box. But for example, if I were to type in Willy Wonka, you can see that the search box will pull up anything that fits that. And obviously, there are quite a lot of Willy Wonkas in the world. So we'll go ahead and we'll use mine, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory at Jay's house, and we'll create that scoreboard. You can see now Jay's Willy Wonka game is added to the top of the scoreboard list. And if you want to view it, you can click the eyeball and it will open up a window and show you the leaderboard. This is a live view. It refreshes in real time. And um, you can obviously share this URL with anyone you like. Um, and it's designed primarily for, form, for the form of a large screen television, but it will work in any web browser. All right, let's move on to leaderboards. Leaderboards have a lot of different features and there are many different types of leaderboards. So I think it's best to just go ahead and jump in and add a leaderboard. Like before, we're gonna go ahead and name our leaderboard something unique and we're gonna call this the Scorbit Lab Arcade. Um, and we're going to refer to this particular machine. So in this case, I think I want to do Bride of Pinbot. Now I can choose whether or not, just like the scoreboards, this is private or public. We're going to go ahead and select that as public. Next are the time options. You have many different options here. All time is every score that has ever been posted to this leaderboard and this machine since the beginning of its existence in Scorbit. This is probably the most common and is the default option. Next, you have uh, an option called boxed. And what boxed means is you choose a start and an end time for that leaderboard. 
A really good example for a boxed leaderboard would be if you were having a tournament or an event and you wanted it to end on that day, or perhaps you got your pinball machine on January 1st and you wanted to keep the old scores in it, but your leaderboard you want to have start on January 1st and maybe never end. Um, and these are the, the common uses for, for someone who may be selling a machine to someone else, and then that person can immediately uh, start their own new leaderboard. No sense in deleting old scores. There's also the last calendar option. This allows you to choose a year, month, week, day, or hour uh, for the last calendar mode. So for example, if I chose the last calendar month, it would look at the um, right now, I'm in the month of April, it would look at the last calendar month, which would be March, and show us the high scores associated with that month. Um, a very common use in this case might be a weekly high score list for uh, a pinball league or for a particular venue. Finally, there's rolling. Rolling uh, refers to a set number of days in the past that we're going to look from this point at the point that I'm looking at the leaderboard and it will calculate that, that top list. So it might be the last rolling seven days or last rolling 30 days. This is again something that would be very popular with a venue or a pinball league. So for now, we're just gonna go ahead and leave this as all time. Next, we have these options, one score per player or all scores. And we're, we're gonna go ahead and choose one score per player. In fact, if we um, think of this as a uh, larger leaderboard, like something like Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, where there are hundreds and hundreds of people contributing all the time, we don't want to have one player always uh, dominating a, a, a list of high scores. We might want to have just their highest score on the list. And this makes the leaderboards more interesting and um, more people can, can be seen on it. Uh, on the other hand, you might want to have a leaderboard that's every score because even if it's the same person dominating the top 10 slots, you want to uh, show that person. I personally like one score per player for global leaderboards and all scores for leaderboards that are just for my own personal machines. Next, you have these choices around the type of the leaderboard. It's either going to refer to a single machine like a uh, like my Willy Wonka here in the lab, or maybe multi machi multiple machines of the same title. This would be a global leaderboard. So multiple machines of the same title could be all of the machines in the world that are Willy Wonka, or maybe just a set of a uh, limited set of machines. Finally, we select the actual game. So let's go ahead and use Wonka uh, as the as the choice here and what's going to happen is we're going to have to select from an actual title because i selected multiple machines of the same title these are not my specific machines these are just titles and you can see these two options the willy wonka le and ce and of course the standard edition so let's go ahead and choose that one um, now if i had a a competition with someone else with the same machine as me and I wanted a leaderboard that just combined those two machines, I could add individual machines uh, from different venues here and it would only include those machines. So a good example of that would be a competition between a whole number of individuals who all have the same machine but it's limited to that set of machines. You could do the same thing with users as well. So if there's a set number of users you want to include, you can do it that way. Then you create the leaderboard. So if we look at the result, it opens up a public leaderboard. Again, any browser can see this. And it shows you one score per player. And here's the top 10 list based on that list and based on the, the selections we made while creating it. This URL can be shared or given to anyone else to be able to open this up because it's a public leaderboard. Okay, so there's an example of a leaderboard. Now let's check out combo boards. Combo boards are combinations of scoreboards and leaderboards. 
and they can have up to six different boards on a single screen. So let's go ahead and create one to start. And we're going to call this Jay's Combo Board. Let's call it Jay's Arcade Combo Board. And we're going to make it public so anyone can see it. And we're going to start with a scoreboard. So the way that this works is you can have, like I said, between two and six different boards. So the default and minimum position is two, but you can have anywhere up to six. So let's go ahead and add one. So we just created a, uh, a new scoreboard called Jay's Willy Wonka Game. And we're going to go ahead and create another scoreboard. Let's do this one for uh, Jay's TNA. So these are both scoreboards. And then if we add a third item, well, let's do a leaderboard. And we'll do Scorbit Lab Willy Wonka. And then we'll add another item and make that one a leaderboard as well. And this one is going to be a combination leaderboard that's a global, it's a, it's a multiple machines of the same title, but it's only these four uh, machines combined together. So let's go ahead and create this and see what it looks like. All right, so here's Jay's Arcade Combo Board. And if we click the eyeball, let's see what it looks like. There we go. As you can see, any number of leaderboards you want in any combination. Here is our live leaderboard going on right now. This one is currently in game over state. And here's two more leaderboards. You can also go back in at any point and you can edit it. So if you wanted to add some more boards to it, maybe I want to add a third scoreboard and we'll call it, uh, we'll use Batman 66 and we'll add another leaderboard for Batman 66 as well. And then what we could do if we want to rearrange the order, because this goes clockwise, is we may want to um, have the scoreboards on top and the leaderboards on bottom. So let's move this scoreboard up. And now this leaderboard should be um, three on top of scoreboards and three on bottom of leaderboards. Let's update it. And now let's take a look and see what it looks like. There we go. So in this case, we have six up, Willy Wonka with a, a leaderboard beneath it, total nuclear annihilation, again, a combination leaderboard. And here's Batman 66. This is just my own personal machine uh, and me and my son and our scores here. And you can change these at any time. Now, what you may want to do is have more than one of these on a single screen. And that's what the slideshows are all about. So you can go into uh, a slideshow view by adding different types of elements. They don't have to be combo boards. They could be individual scoreboards or leaderboards. So let's go ahead and create one. And what we'll do is we'll make this one public. Uh, the first screen, we'll go ahead and make the combo board that we just created. And then we'll go ahead and create some other, um, some other screens here. We'll start with a score uh, leaderboard. And this is a Batman competition that me and a friend uh, are having. And then we can add another one here. Maybe I want to see um, the Pinball Shed versus Jay's House uh, leaderboard competition. This is between me and Julian in the UK. And you can see here that we can set the time for each slide. So let's go ahead and make them five seconds just for this demonstration. 
and we can add as many screens as we want. So now we'll create the slideshow and we can go ahead and look at it through the eyeball. Now once all these load up, the, the timer works much better, so you just let it load up the first time and you'll see it as, as it's getting all of its slides uh, set up and then you'll see the timing sort of settles in. So here we see the combo board followed by my Batman competition and then the Twilight Zone competition. This is really great if you have one big screen TV and you're trying to show scores in a game room uh, that have different elements to it. Uh, it's a very useful little tool. And again, this could be public or private and you can share it using the URL. Finally, there's stream boards. Stream boards are a slightly more advanced set of features for people who, are, who like to stream their pinball games or tournaments. And it's basically designed to allow you to create different views based on your needs. They're fixed, so you really want to set the size of your canvas if you're going to be using one of these combination uh, layouts. You can, uh, for example, here's a 1920 pixels wide by 1080 pixels tall, and you can choose these different uh, layouts that are very common depending on the number of cameras you have. Uh, this would be a, a typical head-to-head, -head, for example, if you have two people playing against each other. And these are, are, are very common. So if you wanted to just to see what, what some of these look like, let's go ahead and create this uh, standard one with scores and a camera and a big area here open. Now, in this case, we're only going to be streaming with one machine. You can create a stream with two machines where you actually set the live view for two different machines, like for example, you and the person you're competing against. In this case, we're just gonna do one. We're gonna do Jay's Wonka, because that's the scoreboard it's based on. We're gonna say there's two players. Now you can override the player name info, or you can leave them blank and it will take what the app has. And then you can change various colors. But let's go ahead and create this. And if we go ahead and look at it, you'll see how this layout presents. Now we did 1900, 1920 by uh, a pretty big, a pretty big screen. So, so here you can see here are two scores that are live, and as the scores change, um, you can view them in real time on the screen. This green screen area is where you would overlay, say, your play field, right? And so if we shrink this down a bit you can start to see how that might work. Let's look at a different version though. We're going to create a different screen board. We're going to call this scores only. And in this case, um, we'll go ahead and leave the, side, the canvas size small. We'll choose a variable width um, uh, scores layout. And we'll go back to this Willy Wonka game. Again, we'll do two players, and we'll create this, the stream board. Now let's take a look at that. So in this case, you can see up above, we only have the two scores there, and it's, and it's a variable width. So no matter which way you, you adjust it, it can, you can change the width to smaller or larger. If we wanted to update that and make it fixed width and update it. And now let's take a look at scores only in fixed width. So in this case, it doesn't matter which size my, my window is. We've got a fixed set. And so that pretty much covers uh, everything we have here on Scorebit Vision. Uh, certainly if you have any questions or you want to read up on some of our online documentation, check out support.scorebit.io. Thanks so much.